So welcome to the video on injective, surjective and bijective functions. So what we're looking at now is the nature of functions and in particular four different parts. So we want to know how to identify a function first of all. So if a graph is a function, um, an injective function, a surjective function and a bijective function. So before we get into looking at how to identify them, let's first look at what that means. So um, we have four little boxes here with mapping diagrams. So in the first one, it is the function h. So h is a function as it maps every input to a unique output. So that's really important. What that basically means is every blue dot in A only has one arrow coming out of it. So that is hugely, hugely important. It is only a function if every value of x has a different value of y. Okay, so think of a function like a remote control. If you press a number on a remote control, you don't want to get, you know, a choice of three different channels. If you type in two, you want to get the single channel that is programmed to number two. And that's how the function works. So if a function does not, well, if a graph does not have a unique output for every input, then it is not a function. And we're going to look at other ways to identify a function, but that's the start. So let's look at the second box then. That's f, which is a function. And it says that f is injective. Now, a way to remember injective, and I'll just highlight it here, is one to one. So it's a one to one mapping. So if you look at that box there, every blue dot in A is linked directly to a blue dot in B. Okay, so what that means is every X value has its own Y value. And that's not always the case with functions. Sometimes two different X values can point to the same Y value and that's fine, but it is not injective in that case. So to be injective, it's a one-to-one -one mapping, so every value of x has a unique value of y. So the third box then, and we're looking at function g. So g is surjective, and that's onto fun that's an onto mapping. So basically what that means is that every element of b is used. So what for us what that means is when we put in every value of x, every value of y is used. So we're going to have to talk a little bit um, in a minute about the difference between the codomain and the range. So at this point you should be familiar with the domain which is the x values that's put into the function and in this whole slide we're just looking at a for the domain. So the bubble a in each of the four pictures that's the domain. So the codomain and the range can be the same and sometimes they're different and we will talk more about that. Uh, for now, what I want you to see is in the third box for G, every input, so every X value goes to a Y value and all the Y values are used. So last box then on the right, it's function P and this is known as a bijective function. So bijective, bi means two. So bijective means it is both injective and surjective. So instead of saying this function is injective and surjective, we can simply say this function is bijective. So what that means is, remember, injective means one-to-one. -one. So there's a one-to-one -one mapping. Every X value has a single or a unique Y value. And it's also surjective, which means that all of my y values are used. So before we go any further, let's look specifically at the three really important terms. And I know we've talked about one already, but the first is domain. These are the x values. So it's a way of saying the inputs into the function. These are all represented by the A bubble in the diagrams below. So the A bubble represents what's going into the function. They are x values, also known collectively as the domain.
We then have two very similar but distinct terms and it's really important to be able to tell the difference between these two. So the first is codomain. Now these are the possible y values. So in the diagrams below these are represented by bubble b. Okay so they are the outputs okay or rather the possible outputs from the function if we look specifically at um h here so the first diagram you might notice that actually one of these y values is not actually used so this gives us our distinction between codomain the possible y values and the range the actual y value so what is actually used so that's not always going to be the same as you can see in function f again there's a blue bubble or a blue dot that's not used so we have a slightly different codomain and range now if we look at g all of the blue dots are used so in that case the codomain and the range are the same and that's actually a way where we can show if a function is surjective if the range and the codomain are equal then it is surjective since bijective remember means it's injective and surjective in that case again the codomain and the range are going to be equal all the possible y values are used so our first test is called the vertical line test. So this allows us to check to see if a function, um, well, if a graph is a function. Okay, so we have two graphs here. The first one, um, there's three vertical lines drawn, and we can see that each of these vertical lines only crosses the graph once. Um, if that is the case, then we can say that it is a function. So the vertical line test, it is passed if you only touch one point of the graph. Now you have to be able to draw a vertical line anywhere along this graph. Okay, and we could see that with this particular example, we could, there would be no issue. It's a cubic, so we could keep drawing it and we'd only ever hit one point. So that one is, that one is a function. So the second graph here, um, we can see that when we draw our vertical line, we actually hit the graph at two points. So what we would say is this is not a function. So G here, it looks kind of like a quadratic on its side, but due to its nature, it's actually not a function. So we'd say that this fails the vertical line test um, as the vertical line cuts it in two places. So for this first graph, we'd say, yes, this is a function. For the second graph, we'd say, no, this is not. So we have two different horizontal line tests and what I would generally say is maybe you might use the first one, so this one to see if it's injective and then use a different method for a surjective just because often students get the two horizontal line tests mixed up. So if you think that you might I'll show you a second method for surjective. But the horizontal line test is probably the best test we have for injective. So what we want to see is if we draw a horizontal line, will it touch the graph at most once? Um, so you might say it touches the graph once and then it's injective. But just be careful. At most implies that actually there may be parts where you draw a line that it doesn't touch the graph, but that's okay that's fine, it's still injective. So we take that first example here. Here I have a line in blue drawn, labeled A, and you can see that that touches the graph only once. Now, that is not a full graph, it is cut off so we don't see the negative y values, but it is an exponential graph and actually there will be nothing below the x-axis. So I could move this blue line well underneath um, the x-axis and there will be no graph to touch, but it still remains injective. So just be very, very careful. The test for injectivity is that a horizontal line drawn touches the graph at most once, so never more than once.
When we look at the second graph, so this quadratic, we can clearly see that the horizontal line touches it twice. So that means it is not injected. So remember, our horizontal line test is that a horizontal line drawn will touch the graph at most once. So at the very maximum, one time. Any more than that, it's not injected. Now, you might say, oh, well, if I drew a line, if I drew a line here, it only touched the graph once. But the idea of the horizontal line test is not that we can kind of find a way around it, but rather that if a line is drawn anywhere, it will touch the graph at most once. So not that there's one place where we can make it work. That's not what it means. You have to be able to draw a line anywhere and it touches the graph at most once. The horizontal line test for surjective is slightly different, but it is a horizontal line test. And it is that if I draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph, it touches the graph at least once. So it touches the graph really. So here's an example. If I draw a line here, um, we can see that it touches the graph. That's fine. And this graph continues over here. So we lose it a bit. But anywhere I'll draw a graph, I'm going to touch uh, G. So if I anywhere I draw, sorry, a horizontal line, I'm going to touch G. While here, right, I draw my line here. That's fine. It touches it twice. I'm not worried about that for surjective. But I draw a line here and it doesn't touch the graph. And that is an issue. The fact that there is a horizontal line that can be drawn that does not touch the graph, that is a problem. It is not surjective. Now, I, like I said, I'm not a fan of having two different horizontal line tests. So I'm gonna show you two different ways um, instead of this horizontal line test that you can still test for surjectivity. So the first here is if we look at the graph, are all the y values being used? So let's look um, at my graph here. So here's all my y values and they are being used because this graph is going up to infinity and down to negative infinity. So all the y values are being used. In my second graph, are all the y values being used? And actually, no, I'm only using these ones I've highlighted in yellow. Everything that I have underneath they are not being used. So since not all the y values are being used, it is not surjective. So that's an alternative. And that's really what the horizontal line is showing when we do this horizontal line test for surjective functions. So there is another and final <laughs> surjective test. So how to test if a function is surjective. So I'm just going to remind you of two terms. The first is codomain, which are possible y values. And the second is range, which are actual y values. So a function is surjective when the codomain and the range are equal. So when all the possible y values are used. This is a little better than the second method I showed because it's easier to work with when there is a restricted codomain. So when they actually tell us that there's only some possible uh, y values and they're not all the real numbers. So we'll see some examples later in the video. So really what I'm saying is all the possible y values are used. So bijective functions. So like I said earlier, a function is bijective if it's both injective and surjective. So the way we would test for to see if a function is bijective is first check to see is it injective, then test to see if it's surjective. And if the function is both injective and surjective, instead of saying both of those things, we can simply call it bijective. So let's work through a question to see how this actually looks in practice. So I'm going to work through the Educate sample paper four and it's question five. And I can't imagine something as explicit as this being asked on an actual paper, but there might be an element of this in a part of a question. So part A gives us y is equal to f of x. And we can see that here. And it says from or to or. So what that means is that first or is the domain, so the x values, and that second or is our codomain, so the possible y values, so the y values that can be used. So if we look at our function here, we're asked three things. Is it injective, 
Is it surjective? Is it bijective? Um, and we can work through these. Now, it's not clear if they just want you to take one or take all that apply, um, but let's work through it. So this function here is actually a cubic. It's a cubic that's going through the center, so it doesn't have those distinct turning points, so we may not recognize it as a cubic, but we don't need to for this question. First thing we're wondering is, is it injective? So I'm gonna use that horizontal line test. And remember the horizontal line test for injective means it touches the graph only once, okay? Or rather at most once. So it's okay if it doesn't touch the graph at all, but for injective, it has to touch it once. So yes, it is injective. Surjective then is really are all the y values being used? That's the way we can think about it. And I suppose remember that this function is continuing on forever in both directions. The codomain they told us earlier was real, which means all the real numbers can be used. And because this um because this function is going off in both directions, all the y values will be used. So it is surjective. Another way we can do or think about surjective is another horizontal line test, which is the horizontal line test for surjectivity. So if I draw a horizontal line, will it hit the graph? And if it hits the graph, no matter where I draw it, that means it's surjective. What I tend to advise is maybe to have one of the horizontal line tests, maybe for injective, and then for surjective, maybe think about it as range is equal to the codomain. So since this is injective and surjective, we would then say, yes, it is bijective. The reasoning would be for injective that it passes the horizontal line test for injectivity. So i.e. a horizontal line drawn will touch the graph at most once. For surjective, you can again talk about the horizontal line test, but I would prefer to maybe talk about the range of y values is equal to the codomain, which are all the real values. So part B is y is equal to g of x. Again, they're telling us that really there's no restrictions that the domain and the codomain are both or. So that's really like normal, no restrictions. But just to be aware of how that's written. Now we do have function notation which takes that domain and codomain and includes it. Um, and we'll meet that in, if you haven't already met it, you'll meet it in future videos. So here we have um, another graph that um, it's quite, it kind of looks cubic, it looks a bit strange here, but kind of cubic. Um, and we want to tell, is it injective? Is it surjective? Is it bijective? So again, let's use the horizontal line test to see if it's injective. And if I draw a horizontal line, there is a place where it'll touch the graph more than once. So this is not injective. Now you might go, butcher, look, can I not draw it here because it only touches it once? And I suppose the point of the horizontal line test is not that there is a line that can be drawn, but rather that anywhere I draw the line, I will only touch the function at most once. And that is what the definition of the horizontal line test for injective really is. So it's not about trying to find the loophole. It really is about applying it. Is there a place where a line is drawn that touches the graph more than once? If that exists, then it is not injective. For surjective, then, I suppose, again, we have a horizontal line test, which we can use, which means, you know, wherever I draw the line, it will touch a value. Um, just, I suppose, this is not very well drawn because somebody might come along and say, well, here, I can draw a horizontal line here that doesn't touch the graph. But actually, this, remember, has continued. So you would touch the graph. So there is a limitation to that horizontal line test for surjective. So again, another way to think about it is, are all the y values being used? And all the possible y values, so all the y values we can use, it's real, so there's no restriction. We want to use everything from plus infinity to negative infinity. Because of the way this is set up, we're going to continue on forever in both directions. So therefore, all of these will, all of these values will be used, which means it is surjective. Does that mean it's bijective? And actually then, no, it is not bijective because bijective, remember, means injective and surjective. So if you're ever asked about bijective, 
or injective, surjective and bijective. You want to break it down really about injective, then about surjective, and then think about it in terms of, well, then what does that mean for bijective? So let's look at part C. So part C is really interesting. It gives us y is equals x squared, but um, we have a very interesting restriction on the domain and the co-domain here. So here's our domain. And here's our co-domain. And the restriction is that we are only dealing with z plus. So that's positive integer, integers, union zero. So this basically means all the positive whole numbers and zero. So zero, one, two, uh, three, dot, 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 and forever. Now, if I said to you, you know, draw this quadratic, so y equals x squared, um, it would look something like this, okay? Um, but that is if there was no restriction. So if that was where it's or to or, so where we're dealing with all real numbers can be put in and all real numbers can come out, that's what it would look like, this continuous line. Because we now have the restriction, it's not going to look like this. So the restriction is, I suppose, let me get a highlighter so we can get a sense. We're only dealing with, um, so positive, whole numbers and zero and positive whole numbers and zero. So we're only in this section of the graph, so quadrant one. And because it's um, not real, we're not talking about all the in-betweens. So when we draw our points, it's going to look like this. So that's really what we have. Now, as a graph, that might not look like a function really to you right now but I suppose it is it's just one we don't tend to graph because it looks a bit funny when we graph it so because we're dealing with positive whole numbers and zero a more efficient way to work will be with a mapping diagram so let's work this as a mapping diagram so zero this is my domain so I can't obviously put in everything but I'll do a dot 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 and my co-domain then is going to be the same one because they have the same restrictions. So z plus positive integers and zero. So three, four, five, dot, dot, dot. So there's my two bubbles. The reason we don't use bubbles like the last two is because real numbers are all the numbers and there is so many even between the whole numbers. It's so hard to do. We could never really do it. So I suppose it's important to understand when maybe a mapping diagram might be a more suitable method to explain your answer. So again, the function is y equals x squared. So if I take zero and square it, I get zero. So y is equal to x squared, that's the function. Uh, one squared is one, two squared is, sorry, four misjudged it there we go and three squared would be nine so I've kind of fallen off my diagram there a little bit but it will go um to nine there so uh, from the diagram we should be able to see very very quickly because actually sometimes the mapping diagrams are much easier than the graphs even to work with so is it a one-to-one -one mapping will I ever repeat a y value and the answer is no so yes it is injective uh surjective are all the y values used? So is the codomain, the bubble B, equal to the range? So where the outputs actually exist? And the answer is no, because if I look, two won't get an um, won't get an arrow to it as such, so it won't be an answer. Three, five, so it'll only be the perfect squares. So therefore, it is not bijective. Now, could I have used the graph? Yes, of course. So horizontal line test. Now this brings us to like a very, I suppose, subtle little idea about this horizontal line test for injective. So it is a horizontal line drawn will touch the graph at most once. So it is okay if it doesn't touch the graph at all. Sometimes students get confused with that. So the fact that it doesn't touch it, that's fine. It's still injective. Um, and then I suppose for surjective, that horizontal line is, if I draw it, will it hit the graph? And the answer is no. You can see that the horizontal line I've drawn shows injective and also shows that it's not surjective. Another way to think about it is, are all of these y values that I've highlighted in green used? And it's like, no, because we're dotting, we're not even doing a continuous line. Um, and I suppose, 
you have to think again in these whole numbers, but there are whole numbers there that aren't used. So like two, three, five, and so on. So part D then, it's actually the same function, but the just the restriction has changed. So that's going to change how we approach it. So this restriction is real plus to real plus. So only the positive numbers, um, but we are talking about it being continuous. So when we draw this, how it's going to look, and I'll draw it here because that can be our reasoning. I'm only dealing with, again, what looks like the same as the last question but when I plot it that's when we're going to really see the difference so we have like one one two four and when I plot this it will be a continuous line like this because it's or so all of the numbers are included so remember or stands for real which are all the numbers on the number line so positive real numbers so then if we look at this part of the graph we kind of have a bit more to work with so we can go back to our horizontal line test for injective touches the graph once there's nowhere it would touch it more than once so it is injective Surjective, are all the values used? And the answer is yes, it will use all the possible y values. So that's a tick. Now you might say, but there's no y values used down here. And that's okay because remember, they restricted our codomain. So they restricted the outputs that we can have to just positive answers, and we will only get positive answers. So that's there. So is it bijective? And the answer is Yes. Again, you could have used the horizontal line test for surjective. That would be that a horizontal line drawn will touch the graph um, anywhere. So it will touch the graph. <laughs> That's what surjective horizontal line test is. So be very clear, two different horizontal line tests. Part E and the same function again. <laughs> so we have y equals x squared, but again, they've changed our restriction slightly now actually the domain has no restriction so all the x values are used so both positive and negative however we are restricted with our codomain so let's look what that let's see what that looks like in terms of a graph so again y equals x squared our lovely symmetrical graph that will look like this so we can take all of the y values, so these are going on, or sorry, all of the x values because of the domain. So these are going on forever in both directions. And the codomain is restricted. So the codomain is saying, right, you can only use positive real numbers for the y values. Okay, so you can only use those. So really what's happening, if I take another color, is I'm cutting the graph here. I don't care about the negative y value. So that's all disappearing. But now if I look at that graph and I do my injective horizontal line test, I can say, okay, well, regardless of that restriction, nothing has changed. Horizontal line drawn, we'll touch it twice. So it is not injective. But surjective, okay, so let's think about that. So a few different ways we have to think about it. And the first way is the horizontal line test. So I will draw a horizontal line anywhere. And if it is surjective, if the function is surjective, it will touch the graph. And that is true because the area where I would draw a line that doesn't touch the graph, that's gone now. That is no longer in play for this question. So it is surjective using the horizontal line test. The second are all, are all the y values being used? And again, we're not using or we're not allowed. I suppose these are the possible y values. So we're not able to use the negative y values. So all the positive y values are being used. So yes, this is surjective. The third way we have, remember, to think about it is really the codomain and the range. So the range of values here are going to be when we're talking about all of the values here, which are the positive real numbers, which is the same as the codomain. Therefore, it is surjective. So again, a few different ways we can think about it. When we have a restriction in the codomain or domain, it's good to try and illustrate that on your diagram like I've done here, so you don't accidentally include that area that shouldn't be included. Since it is not injective, but it is surjective, it is not bijective. Now, here's um, our last part of this question.
So this is this is giving us the function y is equal to plus or minus square root of 1 minus x squared. And we can see here it's drawn a circle. So um, let's just talk about injectivity for a second. So horizontal line, it will fail it. Okay, so straight away we can say, no, it won't be this. Um, so your objective, it will also fail that because a horizontal line can be drawn up here that does not hit the graph. So it is not surjective, therefore it's not bijective. But I just want to draw your attention to, um, I suppose, something we discussed at the start of the video. So if we draw the vertical line, which if you remember is the test for a function, we see that the vertical line hits this graph in two places. Okay, so this is not a function. Okay, so this is not a function since it fails, which means it hits at more more than one point, um, the, the vertical line test. So do you keep in mind um, it might not be a function? Yes, it's not injective, not surjective, not bijective, but, you know, it's also not a function. So it couldn't have been any of those things anyway.